Welcome into a very special episode, short little episode of Gramlick and MacLean presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Gramlick and MacLean. We had to do a special little video here to react to this breaking <laughs> news, this new news, if you will, not trying to take that from new heights. Don't hate me. Uh, 2024 to 2030 football scheduling model for the Atlantic Coast Conference. And we have these schedules. So we're going to talk some about the 2024 schedule because Mac and I were talking off camera and we can't really wrap our head around the year 2030 because our children will be in third grade. <laughs> and I don't even know Isn't that crazy? what That's that terrifying. means. Mm. I mean, Jacob has, he can't even barely eat. So I don't know how he's going to be in third grade, <laughs> but we want to get a little big picture here, Mac. And I think it's kind of funny that we had the three, three, five model for like six months. And it's here we model. are. It worked well. It was. it was very good. It was very good. RIP. But, I still love no divisions. You're going to get to play each other. I think the yeah. stat here is all 17 members will play a minimum of twice over seven years. Yeah. So that is good. It this is. is the new world, though, in super conferences. And That's we do right. have some protected matchups, which I like too, Mac. And Miami Virginia Tech is back and protected. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. No, we like no that. question. No question. Well, I'm just glad we've got it. I mean, shout out to the brain trust yeah. that went into figuring this, is this the puzzle out. the hardest job ever. It has to be because, you know, you spend all that time doing the three, three, five oh, and three months yes. later, big commish comes walking in. <laughs> hey, uh, throw all that away. We got some more stuff for you. I'd be Figure so it out. Figure it out. Uh, you know, at least he still, you know, still has a job, still getting paid, you know, True. figure it out, whatever it takes. Uh, but yeah, super excited to, to have, you know, discussed all this on ACC network. And then I get to bake it down with my friend here, KG. So uh, one thing that was interesting when you and I were kind of talking this after the fact, uh, the the amount of protected games, you were interested in that. Why did that kind of pique your interest? Yeah. Well, traditionally, and again, none of this is traditional anymore. You've got Stanford right. <laughs> and the Atlantic Coast Conference. But <laughs> traditionally, you have, again, in that three, 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 five model, you had three protect. Every school had three protected teams that you play every year. Right. Now, certain schools have three protected games certain schools have one some schools have zero <laughs> right i think louisville georgia tech they have zero protected games yeah clemson only has florida state florida yeah. state i think has clemson and miami and then north carolina has three protected games so some of those triangle schools have more that is unique that is yeah. different and of course cal and smu and stanford have each other those right. are protected that's new and i know this is a whole <laughs> new world i bet we'll see some of that from well, the Big Ten released our schedule. Honestly, I didn't read it. I'm sorry. I I was not going to spend time doing that. But especially when you have an odd number too, Mac. Like yeah. you have 17 teams. You got. And, and I out. think that's that was obviously a piece, you know, of why and and how you know the unbalance of the protected uh, games there, just because Makes it, it was uneven. Like you, you, you just. I remember them coming out of the ACC and and pretty early often saying or per, pretty early on saying that, that there will not be you know everyone will not have the same. Um, and, and I don't think they went into great detail about that. Obviously, they didn't know yet. Uh, but I would have I would be interested to hear those conversations between ADs, presidents and the conference of, you know, who who kind of stood on the table and said, we have to have this game. Yeah. Uh, you know, with Clemson only having one, did did they care with, of any? Did they really want Florida State and vice versa? Did they feel like that game was important enough? It is to me. Um, I mean, when, when I saw that, I was very happy. Uh, that yeah. that stayed because I think that game is very important and, and something that I would be pretty sad if that went away. Um, but other than that, I mean, do, do you really care, you know, as a Clemson fan, who else you play? You know, I like the revolving door and, you know, seeing more people and the opportunity to go other places. Yeah, uh, it I remember is cool. again, back as a player, I didn't go to Virginia Tech. I didn't go to Pittsburgh. I didn't get to see these teams, uh, you know, at all. And and so that was something that, you know, I really liked about the three three five. Now I really like about this one as well. Um, I think the travel mitigation was vital, uh, yeah. something that I know was on every athletic director's mind, uh, and, and certainly board of trustees and, and presidents as well there of making sure, Hey, you know, we, we ain't going out there every year, definitely not multiple times a year. So the way it looks and the way it's laid out, it seems like every team will travel, you know, outside of the three new, new guys, uh, to California. It sounds like once every two or, or three years, however it works out. So you'll go out there, have a break. Go out right. there, have a break. However, you won't that looks go back like. to back years. Exactly, that's the way to put it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So gotcha. uh, excited about that. Um, and again, the, the protected matchups. It's a lot of fun. Just seeing who they've got. You know, we've got the the South's oldest rivalry, North Carolina Virginia. They're playing. 
That ain't going nowhere. Uh, and we just saw that game and, and how important that is. So I love it, mm-hmm. KG. When you look at this and, and how they're doing it, I think that, uh, you know, just kind of off the top, it, it's going to be really exciting to see. I like how they learned that you can't take away Miami, Virginia Tech, and they brought it back. I love that. They listened. It's big time. I mean, they hurt people and probably the yeah. ADs. And they were saying, look, we need, we need that. We need Miami, Virginia yeah. Tech. I like that, Mac. If you're Clemson, if you're Louisville, you're only going to California once every two years. We actually talked with this um, with a certain ACC coach, I won't say who, off air, when we were talking about the possibility of adding these teams. And he said, it's going to be fine for us. Right. We'll probably go to California once every two years. He literally called it. Yeah. But for Stanford and Cal, mm-hmm. where does this hurt the competitiveness? And does it? I, I think we'll see that with all these super conferences now. Right. You know, does it hurt right. Southern Cal having to go to Big Ten country all the time? And when you look at 2024, you've got Cal playing at Florida State, at Pitt, at SMU, at Wake. Mm -hmm. And you've got Stanford playing at Cal, at Clemson, at NC State, at Syracuse. Does that add up? I'm so curious to see. And you really won't know, I guess, until a couple years, sample size over time. But it doesn't really affect the the existing 14 members that much. I really don't think so. Right. Yeah. No, I don't think so either. But you know, just excited, uh, you know, to, to see this unveiled, excited to personally to get out there to, to some of these schools uh, and, and get to meet new people and, and get to see these different things. That summer tour uh, is going to hit a little bit different when we're going across the country, KG, uh, out to, to Cal and, and to Stanford. And uh, again, I, I've said this from, from Jump Street, but I, I am very excited about the SMU ad. And uh, I think yeah. those guys can be competitive early. Uh, just looking at their 24 from a conference perspective, you've got Boston College at home. You've got Cal at home and you've got a massive brand in Florida state coming to your house. I think Mm -hmm. that's a really big deal, uh, you know, for them, obviously, but also for Florida state to kind of be on there Uh, and then Pittsburgh. And then you have to travel to Duke, travel to Louisville, travel to Stanford and travel to Virginia. I think these guys can be competitive pretty quickly. Now, what does that mean? Uh, Maybe top six, maybe top five. Uh, You know, I think obviously Dallas is a very intriguing and exciting place to be. Uh, mm-hmm. from just a player perspective, from a coaching perspective. Uh, Rhett Lashley's doing his thing. He's back in the ACC, old Miami offensive coordinator that had so much success with Tyler Van Dyke. So I think that's something that obviously is is a home run and, and going to be really nice and successful for the ACC. I also like, Mac, that we're staying at eight conference games, yes. which a lot of other conferences are doing as well. So you can play non-cons. You can play your rivals. Louisville can play Kentucky, Georgia Tech, Georgia, Clemson, South Carolina, whatever it is, Florida State, Florida. And you can also play some interesting non-conference games that challenge you. Florida State, LSU this year, South Carolina, North Carolina. Just keep that involved and maybe keep some of those regional rivalries. I really like that. Yeah, no doubt about it. Do you have (laughs) – this is unfair what I'm about to ask you, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, Tough schedule just off the brink, just off a jump right here. In 2024? Florida State, 2024. Florida State has Clemson at home, has to go to Duke, where I assume Riley Leonard is still mm. going to be there, has to go to Miami. I, I've discussed, you guys have heard me talk ad nauseum about this, this young core that they have. Will Tyler Van Dyke be back there? And again, this is a post-Jordan Travis world. There's going to be a very different right. looking Florida State, uh, and they have to go to SMU. That is a tough one. That, that's a really hard stretch for the Knowles in the first year of this new world. Wait, Jordan Travis is out of eligibility? Are you sure? Well, he might have one more year, but I have assume he will move everything? on. Have we checked everything? Exhaust all our resources here. We'll have to check it. <laughs> no, I'm sure Jordan Travis is going to be off uh, to the league. Mac, when I, just first glance here as I'm looking, because Mac received this information much earlier than I did, I will say. Whoa, hey, don't be telling anybody um, that. <laughs> he got that information quicker than you, girl. What about Virginia Tech hosting Clemson, which, you know, we'll see about Clemson. I think those those – Mac, it's not funny. This is the new world. We'll see about some of those home games for Virginia Tech, but they're road games at Duke, at Miami, at Stanford. Yeah. That's a haul. And then at Syracuse. That's a that's a kind of a tough yeah. road slate for Virginia Tech. And yeah. then what about Wake's road games? At Miami, at North Carolina, at NC State, at Stanford. Yeah. You kind You're of get like two, you kind of get like two home games and then you got to travel pretty far for the other one. So it, it is that's my, just my such a daunting thing, thing to think about. It is. It really, that's a long way. That's a long way. I, I can't wait to just hear uh, from our fans. Hey, listen, not only our fans, but these schools fans love you so much. I can't wait to hear about who got slighted, 
who hates mm. their schedule, who has to travel. More. There's going to be someone out there that calculates all these and tell us this the team miles. travels so much farther and it'll be minimal. I'm sure. I know the ACC did their uh, due diligence here with it, but I'm excited about this schedule, KG. I really am for the flexibility, like you said, you know, only having the, the eight conference games that gives you a lot of flexibility out of conference. Uh, some teams have right. a daunting out of conference schedule coming up very quickly. Clemson opens with Georgia. Praise the Lord. Oh my gosh. Let's see what happens there. Uh, but just a lot of fun. And, and again, the, the fact that this rotates, when do people start having to go out to California? Uh, when does Dallas start really getting involved in it? It's early and often here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so again, right great away. challenge right away. <laughs> year one, uh, big challenge for these guys. And again, super excited for this new model and, and what's moving forward for the ACC. It's definitely, and I think other leagues feel this too, but it's new and interesting. You know, like you've never had to talk about going out to California, going out to Stanford. What's that going to be like? Stanford has been competitive in some some big games this year. So we'll see what that looks like. Cal, they've got protests on the field, but almost beat Southern Cal. And then SMU. I think what's interesting, Mac, what does SMU do in the portal this offseason as right. they're about to join the ACC? Who can they go get? Can they get someone like Georgia Tech getting a Haynes King? Does Haynes mm -hmm. King end up at SMU if this was last year sure. coming from Texas A&M? Sure. That's a big question. And of course, A&M somehow letting Haynes King leave. That's a whole discussion. <laughs> but yeah, and I love that we have this schedule pretty early from oh, yeah. how we've had it released in the past so that, again, you can book some travel. I think for some fans, that Dallas trip for BC fans, Cal fans, Florida State, Pitt, yeah. that's a great trip. Make a weekend yeah. out of it and a place that you've never really gone before for a football reason. Sure. That's a cool thing to do. And then yeah. SMU fans go into Louisville, maybe? I don't know. I don't know where you're going to go. Maybe you try out the one of those. The hesitation. <laughs> well, SMU's road games, Duke, Louisville, Stanford, Virginia. I mean, not exactly like. Come on to Raleigh-Durham. Come on down. Charlotte, Come on down. Charlottesville is a beautiful town. It's a great town. Sure. No question. No question. So is Texas San girl Francisco. excited about Texas. Color me shocked. I just absolutely can't believe it. I am a little it. bummed because my brother lives in Dallas. So I was thinking, oh, when does Clemson play at SMU? Yeah. And it's 2027, yeah. I believe, Mac. It's the first Congratulations. time. Congratulations. So, a, was that a th four-year-old? You'll have a four-year-old? Will you stop talking about how old my baby is going to be? <laughs> hey, I that's don't our need lives that now, KG. That's our lives. I measure everything. Not tonight. Where's Amelia? Where's Amelia going to be? Don't know. That, that'll be the, the interesting yeah. part about it. Uh, it's here. Schedule's out. We're in the future. We're living forward. We're in the Can't future. Can't wait. A uh, lot of fun. Appreciate you guys tuning in for this 13-minute episode where we break everything down for you. I'm sure there will be more talk about this ad nauseum, especially when you know the actual dates of the schedule come up. Mm, That's going to be the good. next important good thing. Point. When do you have to travel? Where do you travel next? And All those things add up. The times of the games. That is going to be really interesting with Stanford and Cal in there and SMU. Yep. Are we kicking at 9 a.m. Pacific? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't advise it, but, you know, crazier things have happened. Well, I think the more interesting thing is, are we kicking at 7 p.m. Pacific? That's what I'm interested in That's seeing. a good point. <laughs> late night, ACC late night, after dark. We're taking over. Pac-12 <laughs> so they don't want any more, so we'll take it. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Like we said, kind of emergency, breaking news, exciting uh, to talk about all of this. Very excited to, to get moving with this schedule and more details to come. Uh, of course, but we appreciate you guys tuning in. We need you to go over to YouTube. If you're watching us right now, subscribe, jump on the channel. We're having a lot of fun. Come jump on. in those comments as well. Uh, and of course, you can check out our podcast over on Apple Podcasts. The OGs over there as well. Rate, review, subscribe. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all.